What's going on YouTube? My name is Tom Davis aka Dark Transmissions and welcome to my channel. This is my very first YouTube video and I'm very excited to bring it to you even though it won't be very heavily edited because I just wanted to get this content made and get it up. I've been talking about making YouTube videos for a while now and I know a lot of my people over on Instagram have been waiting for that to happen. And by the way, if you haven't checked out my artwork on Instagram, check out Dark Transmissions or just click on the link in the description down below. So without much more ado, I just want to get right into the video. This video is going to be based on some questions that you guys have been asking me on Instagram. Basically, how do I get my artwork to look so good when I put it on Instagram? Well, I'm going to go through the process of that with you right now, every step that I go through, and hopefully that will help you in the presentation of your artwork. Because remember, no matter how good your artwork is to the naked eye, when you put it, when you take a photograph of that, especially in daylight, or if you take a scan of your artwork, the light interferes with the artwork itself. So, especially for me, someone like me doing solid blacks in my artwork, if, you, if there's any light interference with the artwork, it can really interfere with how the artwork looks. And it's not going to look as good in a photograph as it does to the naked eye. So what we're doing here is we're taking the photograph or the scan and we're improving it and we're presenting it in such a way that it has the same impact online as it would if you were looking at it in real life. Because the way it works is that when I do a black fill on my artwork, it's completely black in real life. But as soon as I take a photograph or do a scan, you can sort of see through the blackness because the light just lights it up and it just doesn't look so good. So I have a process that I go through and I'm about to show you what that process is right now. So how it works guys is when I'm setting up my, my image, the presentation of my image, uh, I'll usually get like, I have this cork board here. It's a really dark cork board. So it suits my work very well. And it like brings out the blacks and whites very well in my work. So I like to use that, uh, but you can use any tabletop or any surface that you want. Just like be clever about uh, the tabletop that you use and make sure that it makes your work look good and make the black stand out. Uh, or the colors or whatever it is that you're using. So what I do is I'll, I'll take one of my original pieces and I'll put it down here like this. I'm using that for a size guide. Then I'll arrange some pens around it like this. And I'll just like make a little arrangement. It doesn't really matter what way the pens are going. Then I take the artwork out. And what that leaves me with is like kind of like this template here. So when I take a photo of this from the top down, uh, I can like put any other artwork that I want in into that image. So that's like a, basically a background template. Then what I do is I take the artwork over to my scanner and I scan that at 300 DPI or 300 dots per inch. Now the scan uh, lights up the image and kind of bleaches out these blacks. So these blacks don't ever look as good in a scan as they do in real life. So then what I do is once that's scanned to my Google Drive, I have my scanner set up to connect to my Google Drive. So once I've got this scanned to my Google Drive and once I have uploaded the photo of the background from my phone to my Google Drive, then what I do is I come over here uh, to my computer and I load these images up into GIMP. Uh, G-I-M-P. Now, if you've never heard of GIMP before, it's kind of like a free Photoshop. I believe it stands for a graphic image manipulation program and it's quite powerful. It's quite intuitive. And you know, for when you're just doing basic stuff like this, it does everything I need for it to do. I mean, if, obviously if I was doing some high level animation stuff, I probably wouldn't use this. I'd probably use like Photoshop or whatever, but for the sake of this, it does a great job. So as you can see here, I've got uh, one of the background images that I use quite regularly in my work. So if you look at my Instagram feed, you'll see these background images being used uh, in the backgrounds of the images in my feed. So what I do with this image is I'll take my crop tool and I'll just take out a square like that. Right click, colors, brightness and contrast, and I'll bump up the contrast to like 10. What that does is it brings all the details of the pens out and it just like really makes that image just like really nice. Over here then I've got my scan of some artwork. Uh, and again, this is not the artwork that was that I just showed you. Uh, this is a piece called Reaper, which you can see on my Instagram. And what I do is I crop that out like this and I'll just zoom in just a little bit so you can see that uh, the blacks like never turn out as nice. You can see how they're slightly bleached out by the scanner. So if you right click, go to colors, go to brightness and contrast. And I usually bump that up to around 15. And then it looks like this. And that's more like what it looks like to the naked eye. So that's the whole reason that I, that I do that is to make it look as good in this image as it does in the naked eye. So then what I do is I copy this whole image by hitting control C and I go over to the other uh, image that I have of the background and I create a new layer by going layer, new layer. 
leave it as transparency. Don't put any white or any color in there, just transparent layer. Because you want this to be like an invisible layer. It's over here. Uh, you want to see this uh, floating on top of the background, but not visible. And what I do then is into that layer, I drop the image that I've just copied. Let me just see if I can do this. Mm. One second now. So I just want to copy this control C and then I'm going to come over to this layer and I'm going to control V and I just drop that into the transparent layer. So you can see over here in the layers dialog, uh, it's floating on top of the transparent layer. And then I'll just drag that around and kind of reposition it whatever way I want. And then when I'm ready, when I have it in between these pens, I'll just drop it down. Now, in order for me to make that look more like it's like floating, what I'll do is I'll take the transparent layer, I'll right click, go to filters, light and shadow, drop shadow, and I'll just give it like a little bit of, sh of drop shadow all around. And what that does is it helps to give the impression that it's like a piece of paper sitting on the table. Uh, it's kind of just like a special effect or whatever, but it just makes it look nice. If I didn't put any drop shadow into that, it would just look like it was like really flat to the page. So you can see there how the effect is created by just taking the background and the artwork and dropping that in. Now, ordinarily, uh, it wouldn't be as close to the pens and I wouldn't leave like a little white section down here. If you look at the, any of the work on my Instagram page, you can see that it actually turns out really nice looking. Uh, so I would actually do a little bit more editing with that, but for the sake of this video and trying to keep it short, I just wanted to show you real quick what the process is. So just once again, just to recap, uh, basically, I just take my cork board, I arrange some pens around some artwork, take the artwork away, photograph just the pens and the cork board. That gives you like a nice stock image background that you can use over and over again as many times as you want. Then what I do, I scan the artwork in at 300 dots per image, and I take both of those, the background and the artwork over here. I'll bump up the contrast in both of them, drop the artwork into the background, and give it a little bit of drop shadow so it doesn't look like it's like flat to the background. It, you want it to look like a piece of paper sitting on the board. And uh, that's about all there is to it. So what I do then is I might crop that off a little bit or maybe not, save that, upload it to Google Drive, download it to my phone, and it's good to share. So guys, uh, that's all there is to it in terms of the process of me getting my work from the physical form all the way through to editing and presenting it for Instagram. That's pretty much all there is to it. There are no more steps and it's not more complicated than that. Anybody can do it and it only takes a few minutes. I do it every single time I put an image up on Instagram and I always get really good feedback. And a lot of you guys have been asking me how I make my work look so vibrant and, you know, get the blacks really black. That's pretty much what I do. It's it, That's all there is to it. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. And thank you so much, guys, for asking me about my process. It really helps to give me ideas for videos to create. I do intend to get videos of myself drawing, but it's something that i got to work out with my frame lap software and my phone. A little bit kind of complicated, and I'm only kind of new to it. I'm more used to just creating artwork and putting it on Instagram. I'm not really uh, used to doing the whole YouTube thing and the whole video thing. So I'm hoping that I'll get better at it. Uh, in the meantime, if you like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notifications bell, and I would appreciate if you liked the video and throw a comment in the comment section to let me know what you thought. Uh, or if uh, you have any ideas for future videos that you would like to see, DM me on Instagram or leave a comment down below to let me know. I'm always looking for ideas for content to create and I have a lot of ideas of my own but if you guys would like to specifically know something about my process or my style or anything like that then obviously I want to make videos about that as well. So thank you so much guys everyone for watching and for all the love that you give me on Instagram which I'll put a link for in the description and over here on YouTube that I'm very excited to get involved with now finally but I'll have more content up. Hopefully I'll have a new video up every week. So definitely if you've got some ideas, leave them in the comments and guys, until next time, thank you so much for watching. Love you so much. Peace.